Hey, what's up? It's Mr. G here, and in this video, we're going to be going through the Gmetrics ACU AutoCAD practice exam number one. We're going to be going through questions one through ten. So, on the left, I've got Gmetrics right here, and I'm going to go to tests, new test, and I'm going to go to Autodesk, AutoCAD, and I'm just going to start a new practice exam in training mode. So, I'll click it right there, start new test, open Gmetrics. Okay, I'm gonna, so I'm running AutoCAD version 2024, I'm just gonna choose the latest here, shouldn't really matter. <clears throat> Alright, let's see if I can slide this over to the left side. Okay, so question one of 30. Up here we've got where your files are located, so every, or not every, but most of the questions that you're gonna get, you're gonna have to open up a file and then do a certain task. So up here they've got a little folder link that you can just click and it will open up a Windows browser that'll get you right where you need to be, okay? So I'm going to open up. The first question says open new floorplan.dwg. So that's right here. Just double click it. It's going to open up over here. I'll minimize that window. And then it's going to say activate the table named view. So as you can see, there's a lot of stuff going on in this file here. So what they've done is they've set up um, certain custom views. If you go to the little button right here that says top and go to custom model views, you should have a list of different views here. Whatever's in parentheses on the question, that's where you want to go to. So I'll click on table and it just zooms you into that section of the drawing that, uh, that the question is, is referring to. So I'll zoom out a little bit so we can see. Question says, rotate the table by 90 degrees, selecting the geometric center of the table as the rotation point. So, the trick to this question is making sure you have object snap on and also making sure you have the, the object snap called geometric center on. So if you don't have that on, click it to turn it on. And we're gonna select the object. I'm gonna type rotate. I'm gonna hover my mouse over the corner for a second and that should allow me to snap onto the geometric center here. And then I'm just going to type in 90 and it should just flip my table to go up and down instead of left and right or vertical instead of horizontal. Then it says, what is the distance from corner one to corner two? A couple different ways to do this. Um, you can go to utilities, measure, distance, and then you can just click point number one to point number two. It looks like 1.2520. So I'll type that in over here, 1.2520. And if you notice, they have some hashtags over here. That's how many decimal places you're supposed to round to. So since my number is 1.2520, I'm going to take off, I've got two extra numbers there. So my answer should be 1.25. And hit next. That's correct. Alrighty. So after every question, I like to close the file. So I'll hit escape a couple times, close, and hit no. That way, if you get asked a question that deals with the same file later, you can just open it right back up and none of your changes that you've made previously will apply. Okay, this one says create a new drawing. So up here, I'm just gonna hit the new drawing button. It says create a polyline, or sorry, using a polyline, create the shape as shown using direct input. So I'll use the polyline tool. I'll start up here, just randomly. It doesn't really matter where. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, that way I have some room. Uh, it's important that you turn on either ortho mode or I'll turn on polar tracking. I'll just check and make sure my angles aren't set to anything crazy. I'll put them on 45. All right, so polygon here. I'm gonna go to the right. Direct input just means by typing in the numbers like this. 27, enter, move my mouse down, 23. Move my mouse this direction, 15, and then close it like that and hit escape. What is the length of the polygon? So I click on the polygon like that. And to find the length, I just can right click and go to properties. Should bring up this properties panel that I'll slide right here so we can see. And the length should be displayed right here under the properties panel as long as you have it selected. So our length is 90.9422. And again, it only wants two decimal places to the right. So I'm gonna take off that 0.22 and hit next. I'll close that one. Save changes, no. Okay, open home.dwg. So I'll click the little folder here and double click home. All right, got a lot of stuff here. Um, 
I'm going to click off of this properties and, and bring it back up when it's needed. Activate the line named view. So again, I'll go up here to top, custom, and look for line. That should zoom me into the right section. Now, I think this question kind of wants you to draw a line from, it says draw a line from point one to point two. I think it's talking about from this corner to this corner, even though it doesn't really look like that in the picture because you've got this arc and circle going through it. They should probably fix that because it is a bit confusing. Um, it says draw a line from point one to point two. I guess the important part to note here is make sure you draw your line from this corner to this corner because it's talking about the delta x of the line, which has to deal with which direction the line is going. So if you draw it from point two to point one, you would get the incorrect answer. So I'm just gonna draw a line from this point here to this point here. Click on my line, right click and go to properties and look for the delta x, which is 127.5. Now, I'm not, I'm not sure if I have to put a zero here. I'm gonna just try it with the 0.5 and see if we get it. Okay, good. So I guess you don't have to put the zero. All right, let's close that one. And I'm not gonna save again. Open home again. So if you're opening the same one that you just had open, you could always just hit the A right there and click on home rather than going to the folder again. All right, under the view tab within the views panel, select the arc name view. So I've been clicking here to get to these named views, but there is another way to do it. If this is easier for you, you can click on the view tab and then under unsaved views, there's also the same list that happens right there. So I'm gonna go to arc. I don't like doing it that way because then I have to change tabs all the time. So I think it's easier to just go here. Anyways, all right. So zooming into this section right here, that says draw an arc using point one, the center point of the box as the center. So the arc tool is right here. The important or difficult part about this question is choosing the correct arc tool. Because if you just choose the default arc tool right here, and then you start at point one, and then you go to point two, and then you go to point three, that's not gonna be right. So the arc tool they're looking for you to use here is center because that's the center of the arc. The first point that you're clicking is center. So it's gonna be one of these. So center, we've got center start end, center start angle. We don't know the angle of this, so that's not it. And center start length, which we don't know the length of either. So really our only option here is center start end. So I'm gonna hover my mouse over this for a second so that I can get the geometric center. That's point number one. Point number two happens here. And then point number three happens there. Okay, select it, right click and go to properties. What is the arc length? You might have to scroll down a little bit, 33.32. All right, I'm gonna close it. No, open up home. Under the view tab within the view panel, select room B. So I'm just gonna go here to my top view, room B. Draw a polygon within room B. Specify the polygon to be inscribed in a circle. Specify the radius as five and the number of sides as five. What is the area of the polygon? Okay, so the polygon tool is right underneath the rectangle tool or you can type polygon. On your mouse, it'll ask you the number of sides that the polygon has. The polygon has five sides, so we're gonna type five there. It'll say specify the center of the polygon. Really, it doesn't matter. Um, in the question, it tells you to put it within room B, but if we're finding the area of the polygon, technically it doesn't matter where you place it. But I'm gonna click right here. And then we have an option, inscribed, is what the question says. So we're just gonna click on inscribed. And then it says, specify the radius as five. So I'm just gonna move my mouse up. That way it looks like the picture that I'm given. Not that it matters and type in five for the radius of the circle or the polygon. What is the area of the polygon? I select it, right click, go to properties. The area is 59.44. Okay, I'm gonna close that one again, hit no, and then reopen it. Under the view tab, it's looking for the polyline named view. So I'm clicking up there, going to, can't find it, polyline. All right, draw a polyline that touches points one through four to match the image above. What is the length of the polyline? So we start here at one, 
two, three, and we end at four. The part where people mess this one up is they try and draw another line to connect the poly line to create a polygon. But this line is, is red. You can barely kind of see it, but it's red. It already exists. So we just want to make three lines, essentially. So I'm going to the polyline tool, starting it here at this end point, going to this end point, this end point, back to there, hitting enter. And then I select my polyline like so. Right click, go to properties. And it wants to know the length, 347.83. All right, I'm going to close it again and open it up again. All right, we're going to the bathroom named view. That'll zoom us into this area right here. It says, move the sink object labeled sink 50 units to the left. So this is the sink object. When you highlight it, it'll select all of this stuff. So you don't have to do anything crazy to select it. And then it wants you to move the sink 50 units to the left. So I'm going to hit the move tool right here. You can click any base point. I usually like to click off of the object just to make it easier to look at. So I'm going to click just randomly here. And then I'm going to slide my mouse to the left. I'm looking for that green line to pop up, knowing or, or telling me that I'm moving my sink straight. And then I'm going to type in 50 and hit enter. Then it says, what is the position X value of the object? So I just select my object, right click and go to properties. And I'm looking for position X there. I think you can actually, on some of these, you can select the number if it's a long number like that. Right click, go to copy and then just paste it by hitting control V. It doesn't look like right click is working for me over here, but if you hit control V, that's paste, and it should paste in there. Uh-oh, let's try that again. Uh, oh, I did position Y. Make sure you uh, copy the correct value there. All right. And I'm going to close that, hit no, and open a new one. All right, we're going to AC object. Now I've noticed some of these don't have, or most of these now don't have the parentheses in it. So you just gotta kind of do your best. AC object, all right. So it says, rotate the AC object in the drawing to match the image. What is the position X value of the object? So the trick with this one is we select the object, you can type rotate. The trick is selecting the correct base point because you've got, you know, kind of four different corners that you can use. You want to look for the A and the C and then go to the bottom right of the C. So if the A and the C are right here, I'm going to go to the bottom right, which is this end point right here. I might need to zoom in because I'm getting some weird snaps. I'm just going to click right there and then rotate it so that it matches the image. I think I want to rotate it this way. I'm just going to rotate it straight up like that. What is the position X value? Let's see if I got this one right. So properties, um, X position right there. Right click, copy, control V, next, and we got it right. All right, close and opening it again. And we're going back to the bathroom named view here. So this is why it's important to close and reopen it because it wants, it expects you to have the bathroom in its original state. Okay, so it says scale the sink object so that the scale X factor, scale Y factor, and scale Z factor is 0 0.05. So all of these, the scale X, Y, and Z factor are all found in the properties palette. So you just select the sink and then here under the X, Y, and Z, you just change those numbers to 0 0.05. That changes the width of it. Y changes the length, and then Z changes the height, but it shouldn't actually change anything. There we go. So that makes our sink bigger, and I'm going to close that. And what is the distance from point one to point two? So it wants to know how far from this corner of the sink to this corner of the sink. So I'm going to go to up here to utilities, measure distance. Uh, point one is here, point two is here. We got 34.39. Let's try that. 34.39. Correct. And then the last one for our 1 through 10 here. I'm going to close this. 
no. And we're opening up home again. And we're going to the trim named view. So I'm going to top here, trim. All right. This says, which rank rectangle do you select as your trimming object to attain the following image? So, not sure if I remember this question. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Our trimming object, I think this is kind of like an older style question. If you were really trying to trim this, you would just hit trim and then click these two. So, if you're kind of just thinking about it like that, you might choose box A. But I don't think that's right. Let's hit next. That is incorrect. Okay. So, there's another way to trim objects, and this used to be the default way to trim objects in AutoCAD, was you would have to go to the trim tool, which is up here, and then you used to have to select a cutting edge. You don't have to do this anymore by default, but you would select a cutting edge, and box B would be your cutting edge. You would select it like this and hit enter, and then you would be able to cut things like so. I mean, this, this, this question's kind of outdated, and they really need to replace it, but I think what they're looking for, and they, they kind of phrase it like trimming object. It's, it's really your cutting edge or your cutting object, I would, I would phrase it. I would actually throw this question out altogether. But anyways, the, the answer that they're looking for is box B, because that's, what's, that's the object that's actually cutting box A. And that's correct. And we'll wrap it up right there for now.